So the Revel has this motorized bed lift thing and the control buttons are right here in the main panel. Bed goes up, bed goes down, bed goes up, bed goes down, bed goes up, bed goes down, bed goes up, bed goes down. And I really like this feature. In fact, it is one of the main reasons why I bought the Revel. It makes it easy to convert the space down there into a really useful garage or, well, just into a bedroom. It also makes it very easy to load things in and out. So now when the bed is down, it's kind of hard to reach in here, but you can just go in. Move it up a little bit. And now it's way easier to get things in and out. And that got me thinking, wouldn't it be way easier if I could control the bed from here, from the outside? Well, I added a switch. And yes, it is an additional switch. I still have the one on the inside and it still works. I can now control the bed from either here, from the bench seat area, or from the outside, from behind the van. Well, and here's how I did it. I looked at the wiring diagram and also at the wires themselves and how they connect to this control panel. There are basically four wires going into the control panel. A black one, which is ground, a red one, which is plus 12 volts, and then a yellow and an orange one. And these are the control wires. One of these control wires is for moving the bed up and the other one is, well, for moving it down. If 12 volts get applied to that cable, well, then the bed moves. I don't remember which is which, but it doesn't really matter. And by the way, while I was messing with the cables here to figure out how to install my new switch, I created a little <laughs> shortcut and I've blown a fuse. But not the main one down in the panel, no. There's a hidden fuse just for this tiny little panel here that sits behind this big one. And you can only get to it by removing this big panel. Not sure why Winnebago thought it was a good idea to hide a fuse in here that is not really documented, but if your bed doesn't work, if it doesn't move up or down, and it is not the main fuse that is your problem, it might be the hidden one behind this panel. So you need to take the panel off, pull out the cable that connects to this little control panel here, find the fuse holder, take the fuse out, it's a five amps fuse, Put a new one back in and hopefully this will fix your bed. What makes adding a second switch relatively simple is the fact that those four wires are already present under the mattress. They run into the bed here and then they come in from below and you can find them in this plug here. Not sure you can see that, but there's the black one, the red one, the yellow one, and the orange one. Well, okay, I don't think this was very clear. Let's look at the wiring diagram. We have the bed switch on the right, and then those four cables, the black, red, orange, and yellow one, run all the way back to the bed. And somewhere in the middle, they are tied into the battery, the plus and the minus. And they also change color, right? They change to the standard Winnebago colors in yellow for anything positive and white for the negative one. And then they terminate under the bed into this white plug. And then on the other side of the white plug, they turn into their original colors again. And then they connect to some sort of a control box and the motor itself. Let's simplify the diagram and replace the bed switch with what it actually is. Just a simple toggle switch that connects the red one, the plus 12 volts, to either the orange one or the yellow one, depending on whether you want to raise the bed up or down. I'm tapping into the red, the orange and the yellow wire here on the right side of that white plug which means I can still, if I ever have to replace the bed motor or any of the electronics on the left side, I can still just unplug it and plug a new one in. All my additional wires will be on the kind of on the van side, on the side that is not part of the motor and the electronics. And down here I have the same situation as up here. 
I just need to put in another toggle switch that either connects the red one to the orange one or to the yellow one. Basically, this new switch will sit in parallel with the existing one and has the exact same function. And I'm using these push button switches, two of them, one for moving the bed up and one for moving the bed down. Well, actually I'm using three because this one will be the main switch. This one needs to be turned on first and then I can operate the bed with these two. I'm going for three switches for like a main switch, so to have a little bit of redundancy. If I ever accidentally press one of these, nothing will happen unless this one is turned on as well. I'm splicing into these wires by carefully removing the insulation layer, but not cutting the copper conductor. Then I can wrap my new wires around it, solder it in, and then protect the whole thing with a layer of insulation tape. And the wiring harness might look a little bit intimidating. It has way more than the three wires I need to operate the bed. In fact, it has four wires and even more in here. These are needed because these switches have a built-in LED and in order to turn it on and off, I need the fourth wire, which is ground. So it's only needed for the LEDs, otherwise I would be fine with just three wires running to those two switches. And in case you are wondering about the change in scenery, well, it started raining and I'm doing the rest of the installation here in the garage. And I want to mount these switches here at the rear left corner of the bed and I want to mount them from underneath. They will be out of the way, hidden, and I can still easily reach them and move the bed up and down. By the way, this is the temporary switch that I was testing with. I made a little drilling guide for these three holes that I need to drill. These are just pilot holes. So now I can turn them into bigger holes. I need 16 millimeters. And by the way, they are not equal distance on purpose. I spaced out the main switch a little further away. So these will be up and down. And this one here will be the main switch. And three. And by the way, there's a block of wood on the inside that I hold in place with this clamp here. And that prevents me from just pushing through. Makes for cleaner holes. I can now drop in the three switches and I'm using a piece of plastic with the same hole spacing on the inside as some sort of a washer just to beef up this plastic here. Well, and here's what it looks like on the inside. I can now connect the wiring harness to those three switches. On the one side, I have the connectors for the switches. And on the other side, whoops, I have those four spade connectors. They will eventually go into this housing and then connect to the rest of the cabling that I installed earlier. But because I still don't know which of the cables, remember the orange one and the yellow one, I still don't know which one is for up and which one is for down. So by leaving it open for now and then just plug it in and see what happens, I can still decide which of my two switches is for up and down. I hope that makes sense. temporarily plug in them in and then I check if the buttons work in the correct order and if they don't 
then I just reverse those two. I want the inner button, the one on this side, to move the bed up. Yep. And then the one on this side to move it down. Yep. So this is the right order. I can remove them now, put them in the housing, and then plug it back in. Sorry for the flickering, this is not a dedicated video light. I dressed up the cables a little bit on the inside and attached them to the bottom of the bed cover with the self-adhesive pads for, well, cable ties. Well, and it's finished. So this one is the main switch. If I turn it on, they all light up red, yellow, blue, and then the blue one moves the bed up and the yellow one moves it back down. And even if there's something in the way, I can still easily reach in, turn it on, and then move it up. This of course is a momentary button, so I need to keep it pressed to move the bed up. And usually I don't need to move it all the way up when I'm rearranging things here. I only need to lift it a few inches and, well, lower it back down when I'm done working on things in here. And then I turn it back off so those buttons no longer operate. And like I said, I can still do the same thing from the inside, from the panel on the inside. I'm sure this will be a super useful upgrade and I don't really know why I haven't done it sooner. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.